Hi guys, welcome to my Tuesday Live. I'm so happy for you to be here. Very excited for you to make it out to spend some time with me this Tuesday evening. It's really cool for you to be here. Thank you so much for making time out of your busy day for me, especially for me to talk about this super cute lost in time teddy bear that I can't wait to show you how to make. Oh my gosh, I'm so, so excited. So to just uh, mention how to, or how this tutorial, how this live is gonna go, it's structured like this. So if you are watching the replay, I will talk about the teddy bear, my experience making the teddy bear. I will talk about the materials to make the teddy bear. I will talk about all of the fun thing in regards to the lost in time teddy bear here in the very beginning of the tutorial. And then after I'm done talking about the teddy bear, I will open up my live for a live Q and A session where I will answer all of your Yarny related questions, which is so much fun. I've been enjoying that immensely, having those conversations and just engaging with you and having fun with you and talking about questions. Um, I would love to introduce my moderator. So my moderator is Hannah. If you get a message from Hannah or if uh, you have a question and you want to make sure that it gets to me to answer at the, at the Q&A session portion of this live, Hannah is the one that will get your questions over to me. She takes screenshots and text them to me directly. So when I get to that part of this video or of this live, um, I don't have to go back and read through the, the chat content. I can just immediately go straight to the questions that Hannah has sent me. And she's super awesome. She answers questions quickly for you. Like if you're asking where something is, she can hook you up. And in general, she's just the biggest sweetheart. So everybody, please say hi to Hannah. Welcome, Hannah. <laughs> She's awesome. I couldn't do this without without her, honestly. Uh, before I even get started talking about the teddy bear, though, I do want to mention an announcement that uh, I am going to be tweaking my tutorial dates a little bit. So instead of me releasing a brand new video every single Friday, like I've been doing, um, I'm going to change that to I'm going to release a brand new video on the 10th. 20th and 30th of every month. Okay. So there'll be three tutorials opposed to four. So, but every month it'll be on the 10th, the 20th and the 30th to keep it consistent. So that way, you know, now in February, there's no 30th, but I will probably just post a uh, that video in the beginning of March, February, March. Yeah. So there will be still that third video. It'll just be like right it would be like February 1st or something like that. You know what I mean? But why am I doing that? I'm doing that because the tutorials that I have planned for the rest of the year, really, they're going to be really special tutorials. And I've been trying to make these tutorials right now, but I want to give you more. I want to give you better quality videos opposed to quantity videos. I want to do a better job. So I'm going to be making much better quality videos for you, which I'm super excited about, especially with some of these projects. They just need, they need that extra quality. They need that more time. So I'm very, very excited for these upcoming tutorials that are coming. And I can't, I can't wait for you to see them. You gotta, you gotta keep checking in with me because it's going to be awesome. All right. And members, if you are a member to my channel, Use those emojis, man. Now is the time to go nuts. Go crazy with your exclusive emojis that you get when you are a member to my channel. So I hope to see a lot of those emojis in the chat. I, I, I honestly love these emojis. I think they're super cute and I hope you enjoy them too. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get to the Lost in Time teddy bear. Let's talk about him a little bit. Isn't he just the cutest little thing? <laughs> All right, so the Lost in Time teddy bear is actually the third part to the Lost in Time baby set that I have created. I have I started with the blanket, the Lost in Time baby blanket that released two weeks ago. Uh, last week, I released the Lost in Time baby beanie, and now it's the teddy bear. And these were just, oh, Fern, Mwah! thank you so incredibly much. I love that you are a member for two months. 
how awesome two months already crazy how quick that for real right oh my gosh love it thank you for being here fern um the bear was just something naturally for the set that i wanted to put together when i was thinking about baby gifts be, because most of us crochet things, um, we just love to crochet and baby things are just super cute. And oftentimes we want, we want to make baby gifts. And I was like, okay, if I wanted to make like a set, some of the key baby things are blankets, obviously, beanies are a hit and stuffed animals. Babies are just, we always buy babies like stuffed animals or something cozy, cuddly to to just sleep with or comfort them. And so stuffed animal was perfect. But when I made a stuffed animal, I wanted it to meet certain, certain, what what's the word? Um, aspects to the stuffed animal. I wanted it to have certain qualities, such as I wanted the stuffed animal to be huggable for a baby. I wanted the baby to be able to wrap its arms around and, you know, just like carry, carry the stuffed animal around, you know, that really cute, like baby carrying, I mean, this is more of a toddler carrying something or even just baby falling asleep with its arm around stuffed animal. Just these thoughts came to my mind. Um, so I wanted him to be bigger. I didn't want him to be itty bitty. <sighs> when, however, when it comes to a larger stuffed animal, there's more steps to it, right? Because you're adding more rows. You're having to make sure that there's more material. There's just more, you know, whenever it's bigger, there's just more to it. And so when it comes to my tutorial that you're going to see on the 10th, so the teddy bear will be coming out on the 10th of this month. Um, it's a pretty long tutorial. But I did I did that for two reasons or yeah, two reasons really. It's a long tutorial because I hold your hand and guide you through every single step, every stitch of this stuffed animal. Now it's not to the extent of we're working every single row together. We're not working every single row together, but I am getting you to a point where I feel comfortable and confident and letting you go and being like, okay, just repeat this step through this row and then I'll meet back up with you. Um, and so I really wanted to make sure that even, even somebody who is an, an advanced beginner, I'm not going to say absolute beginner because uh, I think absolute beginners would struggle just with structure, really. I mean, an absolute be beginner could give it a shot to try because it's just single crochet stitches really um, we are working a lot of increases and decrease stitches um but other than that it's just like putting everything together assembling it so i wanted to make him super super easy beginner friendly um but i wanted to also make sure that if you just have trouble with stuffed animals if if they are really new for you and you're nervous giving a try, I, I got you covered. I have your back and really I tried to make it so this tutorial, you could finish the tutorial and have as close as possible to an exact replica of what I created. That, that was my goal. So it's a really long video, but it's for a purpose. I wanted to be as helpful as possible with it. Uh, secondly, instead of breaking up the video into smaller videos, like I've done in the past with other stuffed animals, was break it into parts. I kept it together because I found that people, um, they would find the first video, but then they'd struggle to find the adjacent videos. And uh, I could I could see that being kind of a headache, a pain in the butt. So I was like, you know what, we're just going to keep everything in the same location. It's all going to be in one video. But I broke, I'm breaking down the timestamps to everything like, okay, guys, we're making the body. And that's going to start here. And okay, guys, we're going to make the head. And that's going to start here. And the arms here, legs here, tail here, ears here, mouth here. And even down to sewing on the, the eye. It's going to be here. And then assembling all the pieces. I walk you through how I assemble everything together. What rounds I place the arms between. I tell you. And what rounds I place the legs between. The tail mouth, the ears, I tell you all that, just, just 
because I want to be as helpful as possible. Um, but of course, that's all just optional. You, it's your bear. You know, if you want to place his arms, legs, tail, ears in a different way, it's yours. You know, do it. Do what you want. Hi, Melissa. Welcome. Uh, and what was I going to say other than that? Oh, okay. So super cute teddy bear. Now for me, oh, I'll mention that when I go over materials. Now I'll go over materials right now. So if you want to know exactly what materials I used for the teddy bear, so that way you can just be prepared before the tutorial comes out, just get the materials together. You can absolutely do that. Uh, the materials that I used were the Bernat Softy Baby yarn. Again, I kept everything the same so that way it was all unison. They're all the same colors. They go together really, really well. Uh, this is the antique white, little mouse brown again. If you would like, you can play with other colors, have fun with it. If you like, don't want to make the set, you just want to make the teddy bear, use whatever colors you want. This is a size three weight yarn, DK lightweight uh, type yarn. Super cute. Obviously, it is dominantly one color opposed to the other color. So if you want, you can just get one skein of each. So it's one skein. I have one skein of the antique white, one skein of the little mouse brown. And literally, you could just flip flop it. So you could make two two bears. <laughs> uh, poss possibly more. I didn't go that far into how much materials I used because it got to the point where I think I started I started breaking down the math of how much yarn that I used for each piece. And then it was just, it was just ridiculous. It was a lot. So um, you could definitely make like two bears, like one that was all white with accents of little mouse brown and then flip flop it where it's all little mouse brown with accents of the antique white. So super fun, super cute. If you, if you want to do that, there will be enough yarn to do that. Okay. Crochet hook is the H8 five millimeter crochet hook, just like I used with the other pieces. So again, everything is uniform, unison, all the same. Uh, yarn needle or tapestry needle to sew the pieces, attach the pieces onto the body. You're going to want obviously scissors, polyfill to stuff the stuffed animal with or stuffed animal stuffing, whatever you feel most comfortable using or getting your hands on. Um, and the one thing that I added, let me get them. I don't have them out. One second. Okay, so the one thing that I added to my teddy bear, but it's completely optional. I know some people feel a certain way about it, but I added some glass beads to my teddy bear to give him just a little bit of weight so he will sit propped up. And I made sure though that he wasn't going to be super heavy. So it's not any kind of hazard for baby, no hazard for baby at all. He's perfectly within weight of other stuffed animals. I did, I watched, I read an article, I read an article about uh, some blankets and stuffed animals that had a little bit of weight, just, just a little bit of weight. And it helped baby to feel more comfortable, com like soothed them more. And so I was like, how cool is that? So again, they're probably going to be more sleeping on top of stuffed animal, but if you wanted him to be propped up to sit you could do that. Thank you so much, Sharon. Um, thank you for all that you do. Oh, thank you so much for being a part of everything that I do. That's super, super special. So I found these at the Dollar Tree. You could easily get those Dollar Tree, Walmart, wherever you want. They're just glass beads like for a fish tank. They're huge. When you compare them to the size of the stitches, there's no way they're falling through stitches. So you don't have to worry about any choking hazard because those aren't getting through anything even with wear and tear there's these aren't getting out at all but of course they're optional if you don't want to use them you don't have to um i also liked using them for the baby or the bear 
as a photo prop. If you are a photographer or you know somebody who's a photographer or you want to just make this as a photo prop option and give it, give it to baby and maybe they keep it on a shelf or something just for all the pieces to be together, you could absolutely do that. Just helps, it helps a lot to keep him sitting in place exactly the way you want. Okay, so that is all the materials that I used. So if you wanted to have anything ready prepped, feel free to have that ready prepped. And I will have a kit for this lost in time teddy bear. It's not ready yet. So if you go to my website and look under kits for this for this kit, it's not there yet. It's not ready yet. It's almost ready. But I wanted to have a stuffed animal kit prepared for you. And I thought this would be great in regards to the set. You got the blanket, the beanie, and the teddy bear. You just get all the same unison materials, have everything to make all three pieces. It, it just made sense if I had the other pieces in a kit that I'd want to make him in a kit too, just so that you could get your hands on everything the same, you know? So he will be ready very, very soon. Keep checking in on my website, crochetwithtiffany.com under my kits section, and he will be there very soon. I'm very, very excited. He's super, super cute. Thank you for all the love and support for him. Um, I have fun making stuffed animals. They're one of my favorite things to make. And I think it's because of all the joy that they bring. All right. So I think that covers the Lost in Time teddy bear. I am open to any questions that you have in regards to him or anything in regards to crochet questions. If you asked a question earlier in the chat and I, I haven't looked at the chat yet, that is something I'm waiting for for now, the Q&A session. So if uh, you had a question, it is highly likely that, yep, Hannah's already sent me a bunch of questions already that have been asked. And if you have any new questions, feel free to fire away. I am all yours. That concludes the Lost in Time teddy bear, like me talking about all the other stuff in regards to him. But I'm really, really excited about him. I hope you love him. Okay, let's go ahead and talk Q&A. Super, super excited. Mystery Woman 1985, welcome, Sarah. I'm so happy that you are here. So uh, Mystery Woman 1985 was my mystery box giveaway winner on Saturday. I announced her the winner. So I'm so excited. Your stuff is on the way. I can't wait for you to get it. I'm very, very excited about that. I hope you enjoy all your goodies. All right, you have a question. Tiffany, when you are crocheting and get all, or, and get almost, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about and just get far into the project and notice a mistake at the beginning. Do you undo the whole thing to fix the mistake or leave it as is? I'd say it depends on how noticeable the mistake is. <laughs> uh, there's often times when I have left mistakes alone because it was it was honestly more of a hassle to fix it. Not that big of a deal. Uh, do I have? But sometimes you want to fix it. Sometimes you're like, sometimes it affects the blanket pattern so much that if you don't fix it, it messed up things significantly and ruins the whole project, uh, especially if a count is off. I've done that with one blanket. I don't, I'd have to find it. I was starting a blanket once that had, um, it was on Pinterest and it was one of those blankets where it was like a tree was in post stitches on top of the the blanket so every row was like single crochet stitches but every now and then you'd add a post stitch and together they would start to form what looked like a tree and super beautiful absolutely loved it but i did something wrong to begin with so it's like two and a half trees <laughs> And uh, I, I was making this blanket a long time, long, long time ago. I gave up on that blanket a long time ago. I wanted to make it for my husband, but I was also using yarn that I got from a yard sale. And it was just, I was making this blanket I wanted to make. And I was using that yarn because I had a lot of it, but I don't really like how they paired together because it's not, 
exactly a comfortable blanket to lay with, right? Um, but so I, I put that project away. It just wasn't bringing me happy vibes anymore. And after I noticed that the pattern, I had messed it up and it, it wasn't turning out right. I just kind of, I, I abandoned it. Um, but when it comes to getting so far, it, yeah, there's also been projects that I've, I have mis messed up significantly, but I was able to get away with it because you couldn't tell. So it really depends on the project. Sometimes you can get away with it. Sometimes you need to go back and fix it. So I hope you are in a situation where you can just forget about it. You're fine. <laughs> Because it can be so disheartening to get so far into a project just to find a mistake towards the beginning and have to undo all that work. I've done that before just because I wanted something to be perfect. And it just it takes some fun out of it for sure. It takes some wind out of your sails a little bit. So I hope the best for you. All right, Samantha, what is your favorite stuffed animal to crochet? I don't really have a favorite. And I'll tell you why. The reason why is because most stuffed animal structures are the same. The big differences is the details that you add to the stuffed animal. Um, and that can be a lot, a lot of fun. I probably have the most fun with, uh, I like, I really, really like African animals, like the elephant, the giraffe, the giraffe's a lot of fun. Um, lion. Those ones are just, they're fun to make. But I also enjoy making like a monkey. Monkeys are super fun too. So anything that can have a, a really cute personality, I love. I, I really love all stuffed animals because it feels like you're creating something so full of love and personality that you can like play with and bring to life. And the the people that you give them to cherish them on a whole different level and it's crazy it's super super cool i it's very special so no i don't really have a favorite but i'd say i've made probably more teddy bears than anything else i'll i'll say that i probably made more teddy bears in all sorts of ways too um uh, so I did, oh, again, if you are a member, welcome and use those emojis. Have fun, go crazy with those emojis. I love to see them. They're super special and I just hope you're having fun. I did see Samantha asking, have you ever, uh, have you ever made a crochet teddy bear before? And I thought that question was super sweet and kind of funny because I actually have some of some of my earlier teddy bears right next to me on on the floor so I made these a long time ago and you'll probably be able to tell from like the fuzz but these guys are some of my earlier stuffed animal works that I made from a book pattern and I mean, I've, I've been making stuffed animals for a long time, but these are some of my earlier teddy bears and I've progressed from, from this guy to this guy. So I've, I've improved a little bit <laughs> and he's my, he's completely my design, my pattern and he was from a really cute pattern book, but yeah. yeah, you're old, got all the wear and tear. So like, uh, see where the stitches are all stretched out. Whenever I talk about uh, assembling stuffed animals, I mention kids grabbing the arm and swinging the stuffed animal around. And I, I mentioned that because I've, I've seen it. I have experience with my kids playing hard with their stuffed animals, but they loved them hard too. So I wanted to, wanted to share that with you. Some of my earlier stuffed animals. <laughs> All right. 
So Sophia, question Tiffany, uh, what's your favorite hook size to use and what's your favorite yarn to work with? That is really hard. So my favorite cr crochet hook size to use generally is the H8 five millimeter crochet hook. I find myself using that crochet hook a lot. And it's probably because my most go-to uh, yarn is a size four weight Aran 10, 12 ply, 8 WPI uh, sized yarn. And the H8 five millimeter just works really, really well with that sized yarn. So that seems to be my go-to. However, if I'm making stuffed animals, I usually want to use the E or F crochet hook, which is a 3.25 or 3.75 millimeter crochet hook because I want tight stitches. And when I'm working big bulky blankets, I like to use big crochet hooks. I like to use the PQ 15 millimeter crochet hook all the way up to the 20 millimeter, even 25 millimeter crochet hook. When I'm uh, 25 is more for the jumbo yarn. I don't often use jumbo yarn. Um, I like using the five, six bulky, super bulky, chunky, super chunky yarn for blankets just because they work up quicker. They're fluffier, cuddlier. <clears throat> and those work up best with the PQ or 15 millimeter crochet hook. It's my favorite to work with that yarn. So it really depends on what yarn I'm using. Now you asked the yarn and I couldn't honestly tell you my favorite because again, it depends on the project and I've run into so many incredible, amazing yarns. Um, I will say though that I enjoy yarn that has some wool in it because I feel like if it has alpaca or if it has uh, some kind of wool that it tends to be softer and I like working with comfortable yarn. It just helps with the project to be more, oh, what is the word, um, appealing. When a project is more appealing, then it it just is happier to give away, you know, because you know someone really appreciates it, opposed to something scratch scratchy or harsh or almost too bulky and it's awkward or yeah, just I I like anything plushy, comfortable, and soft to work with. However, there's also a, a varying factor with what project you're working also. So it's really, really hard for me to answer that question. I have a lot of favorites. All right, next question. Thank you so much for your questions, guys. I love answering your questions and being engaged with you. I think it's super fun, super cool. I know that I'm not mentioning anything in the chat. If you are having conversations in the chat, lots of love straight at you. Thank you so much for just hanging out there, talking amongst amongst yourselves. I see some awesome, amazing people in there. I see Sharon. I see Michelle and Fern. Oh my gosh, you ladies are awesome. I'm so excited for you to be here. If I missed anybody, I'm sorry. But I promise I will go back through the chat and read all of your fun conversations after I'm done with the live. Okay, so Michelle, I have the hardest time sewing on the faces. Any tips to help? Yes, so I have found that I like to, and he doesn't, I don't know if he shows very much. I will, on, on the faces, are you talking about like the exterior pieces or are you talking about like the, the eyes? Because I know when it comes to the eyes, it's a lot like cross stitch, but the stitches, they don't align one on top of the other. They're kind of diagonal because I'm working continuous rounds with this, with this pattern. So the stitches are not one on top of each other. They're kind of slanted. So you just have to uh, know what shape you're going for and work, work accordingly for that. That's kind of also why you see me working a lot of diagonals here diagonals uh and, but when it comes to the outer pieces like the ears and the face right here i like to put the pieces on and for like the mouth here i like to work the joining stitches into into the work 
I mean, I mean, when I mean into the work, I mean, not around the edges, I will work in inside the piece. I don't have an example, but uh, I won't go around the edges to sew it in. I think I do a few times here and I can see it and I notice it and I'm, I, I'm telling you, it looks a lot better when you go on the inside. That way it has more of that 3D appeal, 3D look. You can sew around the edges, sort of like I did here, but then you can see the stitches a little bit more. So it's up to you on what you want to do. When it comes to the ears, I will place first, add stitch markers to keep it there, <laughs> or anything you can do to pin the pieces where you want them to be. And then of course, continue to look, adjust, look, adjust, and, and sew it in. I do show how to attach all pieces in the video tutorial. So hopefully that helps you as well to get, to attach all your pieces. But I understand what you're talking about. Uh, Sophia, where do you like to buy your yarn? I honestly like the big box stores. I like to go physically buy my yarn. I have a hard time buying my yarn online. I do because I want to feel it, touch it, be inspired by it, kind of have an idea of what I'm going to be working with before I'm actually working with it. So I am a big shopper at Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, um, any, any craft place I can buy yarn, <laughs> uh, anywhere that they got it. I mean, I will even go as far as I look at the Dollar Tree. I look at, uh, I think Tuesday morning had some. Um, I, I mean, anywhere they're going to sell yarn, I will consider buying it. Goodwill. <laughs> I've gone to Goodwill and saved yarn, or at least that's what I tell myself. I'm saving this yarn. <laughs> um, but but yeah, I just, I have a really hard time buying something without touching it. Um, I got to get over that though, because some of the best sales, some of the best deals are on yarn that is online. Was that... Right now, my favorite go-to is Michael's and Joann's, though. I really, I really like their yarn. All right. Carrie Beetle. Um, what brand of hook? I'll tell you the brand that I use, but you use the brand that is most comfortable for you, okay? Who here, do I have anybody here in the chat who was here when I got this bag from Hirschner's a couple of years ago? They, they sent it to me. It's sheep. It has little sheepies. Here, here we go. Like the like year two, year, year two, last year. Begin begin at the beginning of last year oh my gosh feels like it was so much longer than that oh my gosh yeah Hirschner's sent me this bag it was super awesome of them it's a great bag so if you want this bag which it's really cute it's from I don't even know if they still have it Hirschner's there, I put it in the chat. It's spelled really, really weird. Okay. But crochet hook. So for this particular teddy bear, I'm using the boy. I don't know. Let me see. Okay. You can kind of see it. Boy. And this is a five millimeter size H8. Uh, a little dark h8 five millimeter crochet hook i really like using the long thin crochet hooks because for me i like the long neck for my stitches i am a pencil holder and so i really use that that whole neck or shaft of the crochet hook it, it's just something that's important to me i need all that room um when it comes to clover some 
some baits they have crochet hooks that uh, will stop the shaft short and then bulk out for more of an ergonomic hold. And for me, they, they drive me crazy because then I feel like it's my cup of crochet hooks. So we're gonna show you, I have a little bit of everything. Okay, so I'll show you this one. It's one of the light up ones. See, <laughs> uh, but it has the um, the shorter shorter shaft, and for some reason that just drives me crazy because uh, my stitches can only go so far, and I just I just need more. It's just personal preference. It, it's what you were taught off of. It's what feels best holding its best. Some people really need that grip for their hands, for comfort. Me right now, currently, this is working for me. It allows me to have tighter stitches and I can, I like how I can control my stitches with it. So that's, that's what I use. That's my go-to and they're probably the cheapest. <laughs> it's like, I can't, I can't even say I'm, I'm, uh, getting paid off of that recommendation, making any money off of that, because I think that's a $2 crochet hook. You know, <laughs> like, seriously, not, not bringing in the bucks on that, but that's okay. I, do I have, I have furls. This is my, I had to buy furls. I was like the hype with them. And I love the look of wood. So I was like, if I'm going to get a furls, I'm going to get a wood one. So this one was really, really pretty. But because I hold with pencil, that bulkiness gets in my way and it makes me so sad because I'm like, you're so pretty, but I don't prefer to work with you. <laughs> so, but I have one, so keeps it, I keep it in the cup, I keeps it in the cup. All right. Next question. Thanks for your questions, guys. I'm loving these. These are great. L uh, Lourdes. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Lourdes. Can advanced beginners do this? Yes, I did that on purpose. I wanted to make sure that this Lost in Time baby set was doable by absolute, or not absolute beginners. An absolute beginner could approach any one of these projects and do okay. It might be a bit much because I prefer an absolute beginner to play with um, basic, basic stitches. Uh but I'm hoping that my tutorials are such that you could give it a shot. Uh, but definitely made for advanced beginner crocheters. I had to hands down make the set something doable by absolute or at advanced beginners. Every one of the pieces. So great question. Pam, Pam, you're here. Welcome, Pam. I'm so glad that you uh, that you're here and you made it. Question. After making your chain and you are starting row one, do you have to go through the V's or can you go through the bump on the backside? This is a great question. Uh, you can honestly do whatever the, whatever the heck you want. Uh, I've seen it done three ways. I've seen stitches made off of the foundation row chain three different ways. So honestly, how, it's, personal preference, however, however it works best for you, is most comfortable for you, looks the best for you. Um, for me, the reason why I go into two stitches on my foundation row chain is because I kind of go off the premise of when you're working stitches in every other row, you're working your stitches underneath both loops, the front and back loop. So I'm like, why don't you just do that with your chain? also work under the two loops, the front and back loop. And so have those two on the top, one on the bottom. The only time it ever gives me, uh, I, I kind of wish I did it the other way is when I'm making my border. And then when I get to the bottom section, I'm working only that one remaining loop left over. And then it's like, okay, this, this is, we can do this, this is doable, but it looks different working underneath just the one loop that's available opposed to two. Um, another reason why I prefer to work underneath two loops opposed to just one is 
for me personally, when I work under just one, the there's a significant gap between row one and the foundation row. And I don't like that gap. I do not favor that gap at all. Now that gap may disappear when you do a border, which makes sense that it would disappear. But um, I don't like the look of it. But I've also seen people go through like um, they take the V stitches. So on one side of your chain, your foundation row chain, you'll see V stitches. If you were to flip that chain over, they look like chain links that are linked together like, like this. And then you just work in the top link, leaving the V stitches on the bottom. I've seen that done too. And I've actually, sh I show how to work all three methods in my um, absolute beginner. I think it's video one, like how to crochet video one. Uh, I show how to do all three of those steps because your one is not better than another. Uh, it's personal preference completely. It's um, one of those things that I wish it wasn't something that people are like, this is the only way to do it. This is the end all be all. You have to do it this way because that's not true. Um, I've seen, cause I've just seen it three different ways, <laughs> you know, so it's just whatever works best for you. So if you'd like to check out those ways, feel free to watch that video, uh, how to, yeah, how to crochet video one that's in my, on my channel, um, or just keep doing what you do. And if you see me doing it one way, but you don't do it that way, you don't have to follow me in that regard. Don't follow where I'm putting my, my crochet hook in the chain, the foundation row chain, just follow what I'm doing in that stitch space. Does that make sense? So put your crochet hook wherever you want to into that chain. But if I'm making one stitch, just make one stitch. If I'm making two stitches, make two stitches. Okay. Cool, great question though. I could see how that would be something that comes up. Mystery woman, 1985, not a question, just nice. Tiffany, I also want to thank you for my mystery box items. I have been looking for a yarn bowl, but have not been able to find one or find one, the right one. When I saw the one you chose, I thought, I love it. Oh, I'm so glad. I know I'm, shh, don't tell anybody, but I really want to start collecting yarn bowls. Like I want to start buying a bunch of yarn bowls and like displaying them that I want to do that, but shh, don't, don't tell my husband just between you and me. <laughs> Don't want to drive him crazy. <laughs> uh, Sophia, how do you hold your yarn? Oh, Sophia, are you a, an absolute beginner crocheter? I'm very curious. Um, your questions are great questions, but I'm curious if you're trying to learn. Um, <laughs> the way I hold my tension hand is apparently very different than most other people. I've heard, I've had like maybe one or two people tell me that they hold their tension hand, their finger the same way that I do. And I don't know if I learned it from my grandmother or just because I was ta taught by my grandmother at a really young age and actually honestly had to do a lot of learning by myself that maybe I learned a bad habit of holding my crochet hook or not my hook my yarn tension let me show you oh this will work i'm like i have stuff everywhere there's got to be something somewhere okay i started working on this little demo for the video I have coming up. Always be prepared. Okay, so when I'm working, okay, so it's times like this that I wish I had my dual camera thingy. It's coming, it's not ready yet. Okay, so when I hold my yarn tension, I will hold my yarn tension, like I hook my finger like this. So crochet hook, yarn. A lot of people 
point. They do the pointer. So when they're working, it's pointed. Uh, there's a thing with yarn like this where it's like tucked there to give it a little more tension. The whole point and however you want to do it. Like I've also seen somebody like loop it around like three times their finger and then do it. The whole point, the whole point of your yarn tension hand, whether it's your right or your left, because you're right handed or left handed, the whole point of your, of your yarn tension hand is to make the yarn, your working yarn that's attached to the yarn ball, make it tight so that when you're working your stitches with your crochet hook, this yarn is tight and you can work around it, work around it insert somewhere in the work work around it because if it's too loosey-goosey it, it's more difficult to grab your crochet hook and keep the yarn on your crochet hook so whether it's me like holding the yarn back with my finger like this which i've heard drive some people crazy seeing me do that it's, it's second nature it's literally a muscle memory it's just my how my hands instantly go to or it could be the pointer or it could be that whatever or it could be where you wrap it around a couple times that whatever you need to do to make this yarn right here tight that's the whole point of this hand right here whatever you want to do there you go <laughs> seriously whatever you need to do to make this yarn tight do it actually sorry i got really excited hannah bought me something for christmas uh last year hannah i'm showing them off have you seen these guys they're peacocks peacock rings peacock rings they're on amazon peacock rings they're like yarn tension rings so you put them for on your like pointer finger or honestly you could put them on whatever finger but put it on your pointer finger and then slide slide the yarn in and around and it will help you so if you do the pointer thing it holds the yarn against your finger and it helps with your tension. So then everything's tight and just moves with you. So if you're a pointer, these are awesome to just give you a little extra tension. You know what I mean? And they're really pretty too. Like check that out. Right now I have the head on the bottom and then this is like the tail. So I have it in silver and gold, silver and gold, silver and gold. The lighting is very poor, but you get the point. Right. So great question. Again, thank you so much, Hannah, for being my moderator. You are awesome. And thank you for getting me all of these questions. I think I'm down to the last one, guys which is perfect timing because it's already 7.48. I only have 12 minutes left. So Donna, Tiffany, do you have any scheduled summer patterns that you're planning on making? I kind of asked for a sneak peek of what's coming. <laughs> All right, so I have things in mind. Oh, I just closed that out. I do have some plans in mind. Um, and I'm hoping with my, my calendar, my uh, tutorial days shrinking to only three release date or three release tutorials a month, opposed to four. If you are just joining me on, on my live, I mentioned in the very beginning of the live that I'm going to be changing my upload schedule starting this month, the month of May. I'm going to be releasing on the 10th, the 20th, and the 30th of every month. I'm gonna do it this way so it's easy to remember the 10th, 20th, and 30th of every month on Febu in February, because there's only 28, 29 days, it'll just be like March 1st will be that 30th 
Okay, make it fair every 10 days. Um, and this will help me to make even better videos for you by giving me a little more time to improve my content to make it even better. Um, I want to make clothes. That is what I really, really want to do. So I'm going to be focusing on clothing. I'm going to be focusing on home decor items. Uh, summertime for me, um, I might make a cut in June. Okay, I'll show you guys. So in, if you follow me on Instagram, which hopefully you are, I've been I've been revealing this a lot on Instagram lately. Um, again, Instagram is the place you want to go to if you want to see what my life is like behind the camera. Uh, I've been sharing a lot, especially my studio that I'm building in the backyard right now. I um, They started framing today and I'm super, super excited about that. And I'm going to be sharing that on my vlog channel and I'm going to be sharing that in my Instagram but I'm not going to be sharing that in my main on my main, main channel. So if you want to see that kind of information, you got to go to my Instagram or my blog channel. Um, but I am working on this beauty right now. This is not right now, so he's not done yet. But I am so excited about him. He's going to be. I'm releasing this pattern in June, so I'm hoping to have him ready by June or in June, a baby, a very, very colorful baby blanket. These colors are so bold and just absolutely yummy. So yummy. I was thinking about calling this the summer popsicle blanket <laughs> because it reminds me of when my kids were babies and we would eat uh, popsicles when it got really hot outside. And these remind, these colors remind me of the popsicles. So that, that name may or may not stick. I don't know yet, but this is going to be a, a, a sneak peek for you. This this baby blanket is going to go out in June. I'm super excited. So fun. And get, get ready for this. Get ready for this. It's going to be an absolute beginner project. I am hooking up my absolute beginners. You people that just want to dive right into a project and learn everything else later. <laughs> you know, I, I get it. But um, that I want to make sure it's it's a project that um, it was it was super, super important to me when making this 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 project that it was a project that you didn't really have to count your stitches. It is a good idea every now and then to just count a row to make sure you're staying on track, but it's a project where you don't really have to count your stitches. It's a repeat pattern. Every single row is just a like repeat. Um, and so it's a, a project that is relaxing and calming and you can watch TV and do it and not worry. You can have a conversation with somebody and not worry. You can be engaged in conversation and not worry. Uh, so if you are an advanced beginner, intermediate to level crocheter, I think you'll really enjoy this project too, especially with the colors. The colors will keep you engaged because of how they, um, they change automatically. I am using a color variegated yarn for this project. I'm using this guy right here and he has some sparkles. I have tried to remove the sparkles for any of you out there that are worried about these sparkles coming out, whatever, and I can't get them to come out. So I feel like this is super baby safe. And this is Yarn Bee Sugar Wheel Cotton Sparkle. So again, this, this project will be coming out in June. It's not ready for you yet, but um, I'm gonna be providing people with a chart so that way they can make this blanket in whatever size they want to make it. Currently, I'm making a receiving blanket size for two reasons. One, it's the smallest to scale size um, blanket. Uh, it's a pretty decent size blanket, and um, so I want to get and I want to give you an idea of what 40 by four, 40 inches by 40 inches actually looks like. Because when people hear that, they think, "Oh my gosh, that's so small." when it's actually a pretty decent size. <laughs> so it's just a really good demo example for you. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna show, have all the information with that project for you to make other sizes. Oh, I got another question from Carrie. There you are. 
washing your finished project. I've read some reviews about Burnett Velvet. Washed as stated, and when it came out of the wash, she said it was ruined with any yarn. How do you avoid that? Drill. Velvet. That's a fantastic question. Michelle, thank you so much. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Love you, girl. Uh, when it comes to washing projects, a lot of people are scared to wash their projects. They don't want it to fall apart. They don't want it to get fuzzies. They don't want it to get ruined. They love the appeal, the look of a fresh made project, fresh made blanket, stuffed animal, beanie, whatever, whatever it may be. So they prefer not to wash it. Um, there are ways I have washed things. Generally, generally what I will do, depending on the material, mainly with 100% acrylic. Um, I will washing machine, cold, delicate cycle, gentle, delicate cycle. And then I'll let it lay flat to dry, air dry. That seems to be the best. Um, you could potentially put it in the dryer, tumble uh, or uh, gentle cycle, delicate cycle really low, maybe not even spin, like don't spin, you know, um, that is possible too. Now I have here Bernat velvet yarn and I'm looking at, I do, I do want to make a video on washing instructions and what all those funky symbols mean. I don't, I honestly couldn't tell you. And that's so hard too, because she may have followed all the instructions. Maybe she didn't. Um, it's possible she accidentally was like, oh, I can put it in the washer and dryer and didn't adjust the cycle to a gentle cycle. And oops, um, I have not washed velvet yet. But I might do a, an example. I could do that on my vlog channel. That sounds like it'd be fun. Like create like five different little swatches of, of this yarn and um, run it through various cycles. And it's like a science experiment, almost like find out what was the best resulting method. Washing Burnett Velvet Yarn Vlog Examples Star Star Underline Okay. That sounds fun. I'll give that a, I'll give that a try. I have I have it, so if I have Burnett Velvet, why not why not? test it out. But I don't know. Um, I, I'm so sorry that it was ruined. That's that's sad. Um, my heart goes out to you. But that is it. That is all the questions. You guys, this was awesome. I have a lot of fun tonight. You guys always come asking great questions. And I, um, and I just really, really enjoy answering them. Again, I hope you love, love, love this teddy bear. I hope you give him a go, a try. He's super fun. Again, his the tutorial for this will be releasing on the 10th, which is actually one week from today. It's next Tuesday. So when I see you guys next Tuesday, I'm going to be asking if you watched the tutorial, what you thought of it, what you thought of him, and if you're going to give it a try. All right. And also ch check back with my website, crochetwithtiffany.com, for the kit, for the pattern, just, uh, just to be prepared for when that tutorial goes live. I really hope that you give him a go though. He's super special. All right, you guys have a beautiful, amazing night. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Mwah. My crafters gathers. I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> if you have not joined my crafters gathering, I would love you to give it a try. We have, we have so much fun. It's a very special time and loving to just get to see you and hear you and talk to you. But, um, so I'll see my crafters gathers tomorrow. And other than that, I will see you guys next Tuesday for my next Tuesday live. And Tuesday will be the release of the Lost in, Ta Lost in Time teddy bear.
Have a great night, guys. Bye.